Our final lesson is on geometric probability. Probability is something that we do not have a specific chapter in our book that handles probability, but it's a lot throughout our book we can actually use to do probability type questions. When we're talking about probability, what we want to do is we want to take the favorable region, it could be a length, it could be an area, it could be a volume, or it could be even in degrees, and divide that by the total region. You can think, that, think of this as what you want to happen over the total possibilities of what happens. Well, if we think of dropping a penny onto a dartboard, there's 20 different areas or 20 different regions that we want it to land on, but which area or which region would we actually like for it to happen? So we would have 1 over 20 because we want it to land in 1 out of a total of 20 possible. Let's look at that as a part of when we talk about geometry. The first thing we need to be able to do is calculate the sector or the area of a sector. A sector is a region of a circle bounded by a central angle. If you've ever played Trivial Pursuit or if you've ever seen like a wheel, one of those big pieces of cheese that comes in a circle, well if you cut out a little triangle that would use the center of it, you actually have a sector. If you look at the picture that you have right now on the screen, the red, blue, yellow, and green are all sectors. They could be different sizes, but they're all considered to be sectors. The key part is they all are based off of the center of the circle. So they're created by an angle that goes through the center of the circle. If you remember back to our study of circles, this piece right here would be called an arc, and this piece in here would be called a central angle. It's a central angle because it's off of the center of the circle. Now to do the area of a sector, it's a pretty easy formula. If you, just for a moment, cover up this part of the formula and pretend it's not there, well pi r squared is just the area of a circle. Then we put n over 360. n is the number of degrees of a sector. If I wanted to find the area of the yellow sector, and let's say the yellow sector had 60 degrees, I would just put that 60 right here in place of the n. So the, the, the degrees will go where the n is, and the r will obviously be the radius. Let's try one. Find the area of the green sector if the radius is 5 inches long. The green sector is 135 degrees. The area would be 135 over the possibility of 360 degrees, that's a whole circle, times pi radius squared. We have 135 over 360 times pi times 25. Now hopefully you've gotten to be a little bit better with your graphing calculators because it will be very important and become very useful in doing these types of problems. Using your calculator, you can reduce the fraction of 135 over 360 all the way down to 3 eighths. 3 eighths is a lot easier to use than 135 over 360. Now it is Next, we want to multiply, so we have pi, a 25, and a 3. We can multiply all of those together and get 75 pi over 8. And a lot of the time, that's going to be a good enough answer. That's a very specific answer. We know exactly what it is. If we all grabbed our calculators and we took 75 times pi and divided it by 8, everybody would be able to get the number 29.45. So this is approximately 29.45 and we were measuring in inches. Inches squared and inches squared. This first answer would be called our exact answer. The second answer would be an approximate. 
So it all depends on what type of question it's asking you. Is it asking you for an approximate, which, in which case it's good to round, or is it asking you for the exact, in which case you want to leave pi in your answer because that is a very, very specific answer. Find the probability of a random dart hitting the green sector if the radius is 5 inches long is a pretty simple and pretty straightforward question. We could ask the exact same question for the red sector, the blue sector, or the yellow sector. Only thing that's going to change is the n. That value, instead of using the 135, we'll use the 75, or the 55, or the 90. The segment of a circle, it's a region of a circle bound by an arc and a chord. So this purple area here, that I'm kind of highlighting in blue as well, is made by drawing an arc, or excuse me, a chord. A chord goes across the circle, touches it on two points, and it connects and makes an arc. So the arc and the chord are making that segment of a circle, or sector of a circle. So find the area of the shaded region. The regular hexagon is inscribed in the circle with a diameter of 12. Therefore, we know that the diameter is 12. That's useful because it gives us a radius of 6. As we look at our figure here, I'm going to erase that 12. And realize that this is also a diameter, so we have another 6. What's actually true in this situation is we're going to have, if we remember from the study in regular polygons, we're going to have it be 6 on all three sides. That is only true when we have a regular hexagon, our six-sided figure. So we have a hexagon inside of a circle. We draw in the perpendicular, and now I'll go ahead and draw this triangle piece that I'll shade in blue. The reason is, is we need to get the length of that apothem. The whole piece would be 6, so part of it would be 3. That would be the part from the edge of the circle to halfway through the side. The slant is 6. Now we'd rather use the fact that this is a 30, 60, 90. One, it's a lot faster and easier once you get used to it. And two, it's way more than exact than the Pythagorean theorem once we start taking square roots. And we'll notice that this is just going to be 3 root 3. I'm going to go back to my figure now and start erasing this and kind of put back all the pieces where I need them. First, we have the apothem, which is 3 root 3. Next, we have one side, which is 6, which will help me get the perimeter. Let's write it up. Perimeter, 6 times 6 is 36. The apothem is 3 root 3. To find the area of the white part, I'm going to take 1 half of the perimeter times the apothem. So 1 half of 36 times 3 root 3. Hopefully this is becoming a little bit easier for you as we've done a fair amount of work on our regular polygons. 1 half of 36 is 18 times 3 is 54 root 3. That's for our pentagon. Our circle now if you remember, we had drawn in this radius right here of 6. So an area of a circle is pi r squared, or pi 6 squared, which would be 36 pi. I now have the circle, and I have the hexagon. 
what I need to do is I need to subtract it. And what that will do is that will give me the measurements of all of these green pieces. Then, if I divide that out, I'll be able to get down to the two that I need. So first, let's just get the remainder. We're going to take the area of the circle, which is 36 pi, and we're going to subtract the area of the hexagon, which is 54 root 3. We get 19.56. Now, I would suggest leaving this on your calculator and not clearing the screen because then we'll get much more exact answers. So the area, and I'll just draw these little, the area of the six of those, there are six of them. So the area of the six half moons, we could say, or partial moons, would be equal to 50, actually it would be 19.56. That's for all six of them. So now if I wanted the area of just one of them, I would take and divide that answer by six. So one little half moon would be 3.26. But if I look back to this, I want two of them. So all I need to do to get two of them is simply take that answer and multiply it by 2. And I will get 6.52 units. Actually, I think we had a units on this one, didn't we? Yep, centimeters. So centimeters squared. That's the end of everything for chapter 11. If you had any questions on today's or anything else that we've covered during this chapter, make sure you ask as we're getting close to taking our test.